Good evening. Welcome to the October 16, 2018 meeting of the Town of Manchester Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, tonight's first order of business is approval of the August 21st, 2018 minutes. Uh, just as a reminder to all, the September meeting was canceled due to lack of activity. I want to enter in one change. I did have a typo there on the um, approximate gallons to fill down the second paragraph under the car wash of all mm. time, and it should be six to 7,000 gallons, not 70,000 gallons. Minor difference. It's a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. 6,000? Yeah. Got it. Okay. I make a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from August as submitted with the one correction. Okay. Motion on the floor to accept the minutes as written with the one change. Mm -hmm. I second that. Okay, we can have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved. Thank you. Uh, let's see, reports. Steve, we'll start off with you. Okay, I just have one item. Uh, last week, I introduced to the mayor and council our new director of public works, Mr. Rodney Koontz. If you're not aware or are aware, Donnie Knott is retiring in December after 30 years of service with the town. Uh, Rodney brings with him 30 years experience from Carroll County, has a very good extensive background in all facets of uh, public works, and we're very happy to have him here. Last Tuesday was his first day, uh, had him here last Tuesday evening. Uh, he come back for more punishment this week, so I think he's a keeper. Uh, but you will see him from time to time uh, making recommendations to your board when it comes to water and wastewater and roads. So. When's Don's last day? Don's last day, I believe, is December 26th, I believe, day so, after 28th. Oh, uh, I was going to say he's going to come in the day after Christmas. Yeah, right after <laughs> Christmas. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, we're pretty lucky. Right now I have, you know, for a training period, I have, I have two director of public works to work with. So mm -hmm. that's, that's good. So, now you know you're going to yeah, get some stuff right. done, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Michelle? Um, some background. Um, the Burwagger property, I have been approached by two different um, developers. Uh, Mr. Hill was was in to see Steve and I, along with um, Robert Holwick, who works for Bob Ward. Um, Mr. Hill was interested in putting in single-family dwellings with the Houston Common Driveways type setup, just like he has um, in his Halley Hill. And Mr. Ward's group was used, asking about doing a site plan with some single-family duplex-type homes of the, kind of like a castle field. So it would be a site plan, not um, individual homes with roads and things for us to maintain. Um, the Harrow property I've had no activity on. Sheets is still working on their stormwater management, and along with um, Riley's Garden is also still trying to figure out their stormwater management. Um, I gave you a copy of the letter from Manchester Farm 7. They've had an extension on their stormwater management until next August due to weather. They haven't been able to do any of the conversion in Section 7. And um, next month we're going to introduce Ordinance 236, which is going to be the wording for our new cluster zoning in the comprehensive plan. And I'd like to set up some sort of workshops to work on some of the other zoning changes that I'd like to make corrections, additions, things in Chapter 250 that we need to clarify. And I think that's all I got for you. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for Michelle? Dale, anything from the council? No, it was a, it was a pretty regular meeting. The only thing I did is I informed the mayor and council that the Planning and Zoning Commission would be recommending Ordinance 235, adopting the zoning map, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So just let them know that's coming. Otherwise, it was a pretty basic meeting. Thank you, sir. So what's new in Carroll County? Uh, got some good stuff going on, hopefully. <laughs> uh, the biggest one, the Freedom Plan, finally got adopted by the County Commission. So that is now, the resolution will be signed <coughs> within the probably next year or so, and they'll be implemented. With that being said, the new, the trial and update is now going to continue to move forward. The freedom plan was what was holding that on because we had to wait to see what was going to go on with that with new um, zoning introduction, introductions and that kind of stuff. So right now we're looking to do tentative early December for the planning commission 
to listen and then make a recommendation to the to certify make a recommendation to the planning to the board of county commissioners early january mid-january have a public hearing and then hopefully out of the 10-day period we'll have by mid-february have them to have a discussion and hopefully approval so we can send that off to mde for their final approval but at this time all the chapters have been relatively finalized i'm finalizing the freedom plan chapter right now and so far i've gotten no feedback for the previous chapter that had been sent and whatever it was sent andrea had already made had already made changes to the point to the update uh, the bike and ped master plan the entire document is right now looking to be sent to the planning commission by january for their overall <coughs> look looking at it and making sure everything looks good before we submit it to the county commission for their deliberations and get it hopefully approved and finally uh, the zoning text for our, our comprehensive rezoning went to the planning commission today just for the commercial industrial and employment campus and it went in front of them for their approval and the recommendation to the county commission for their final approval so hopefully over the next month or so we'll have that at least that first section which is the business industrial and employment campus section text finalized and approved by the county commission and then we'll we're still in the process of moving forward with the residential section and we'll probably ramp that back up within the next within the later part of this year beginning of next year to get that finalized and i believe that is about it any questions comments no thank you thank you thank great you. thanks sir okay uh let's take us down to number four which is ordinance 235 recommendation i'd like to take a minute and read the ordinance as it's written and then we'll go from there the town of manchester ordinance number 235 an ordinance to adopt such zoning map amendments or to readopt existing zoning designations as to constitute a comprehensive rezoning of the town of manchester in accordance with the recently adopted 2018 Manchester Comprehensive Plan pursuant to the land use article of the noted code of the state of Maryland. Whereas in accordance with the land use article of the noted code of the state of Maryland, the mayor and town council of the town of Manchester have thoroughly considered and on August 14, 2018, adopted by resolution 04-2018 a comprehensive plan as recommended by the Town of Manchester Planning and Zoning Commission. And, whereas the Mayor and Town Council of Manchester do further concur with the recommendation in Chapter 13, page 98 of the 2018 Manchester Comprehensive Plan that the Town adopt a comprehensive rezoning as a general implementation measure to reflect the land use recommendations and designations contained in the comprehensive plan. And, whereas the mayor and town council have conducted a public hearing to further consider the adoption of the comprehensive zoning map as recommended in the comprehensive plan. And, whereas the town council of Manchester has unanimously approved the comprehensive rezoning as part of its comprehensive review, and this zoning is shown on the town of Manchester, Carroll County, Maryland, zoning map attached hereto as Exhibit A. And, whereas the approval of the comprehensive rezoning as reflected on Exhibit A is in accordance with the duly adopted 2018 Manchester Comprehensive Plan and in the best interests of the town of Manchester and in furtherance of orderly land use, growth and development in the town of Manchester. Now therefore be it ordained and acted by the mayor and town council of the town of Manchester as follows. Article one, adoption of zoning map. A, the zoning for all properties in the town of Manchester based upon the, af excuse me, the aforesaid comprehensive review is hereby adopted, updated and amended so as to constitute a comprehensive rezoning under the land use article of the state of Maryland. B, the town of Manchester, Carroll County, Maryland, 
zoning map attached hereto as Exhibit A for the property within the town limits of the town of Manchester is hereby adopted as the official zoning map for the town of Manchester. C. The form of the official zoning map hereby adopted may be enlarged or changed stylistically as may be necessary or appropriate to allow for proper execution and public use. So gentlemen, that is our, excuse me, ordinance 235 for to add the updated uh, town of Manchester zoning map, which you have before you. Based on what I've read, um, I will take a motion to uh, send this to the council during their regular business. I make a recommendation that uh, planning commission forward ordinance number 235 to the mayor and town council for final approval and adoption. A second. Okay. We have a recommendation and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So ordered. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Takes care of that. Uh, let's go to the Maiden Lane Car Wash. Good evening, uh, Marty Hackett with CLSI out of Westminster, engineering and uh, land planning consulting firm, and Mr. Cork Blake, the owner of the property and the uh, proposed developer of the car wash. Um, I just, if I could, just recap real quick of what happened at two months ago at the meeting, because I believe a couple of you weren't here. Um, I know the minutes are there, and of course there was a correction. Obviously, uh, there's a a uh, lot less water than fills these things than seventy thousand gallons, but. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> call me off guard. Um, back years ago, when this thing was in front of the planning commission, obviously water was an issue, and some traffic con uh, as concerned to snow uh, removal and so on. So what uh, we did was we went into and discussed some of these <coughs> items, and a couple of things have obviously changed in the past 13 years. Um, one being the water situation. Not, the water situation is obviously uh, may have improved somewhat in the town, but where, where it's really improved was is the usage of the water on a daily basis uh, for these car washes. And what happened was the gentleman from the car wash uh, place, this property sits on three parcels, and the three parcels right now, if you allocate water to them, is 250 gallons per day per usage or per dwelling unit, which coincidentally is the 750 gallons a day that is actually being used is what, what this car wash will use on a daily basis as far as new water coming in. And where they need that new water at um, is the spot-free rinse. The spot-free rinse cannot use recycled water. It has to use new water, clean water, um, that kind of thing. So that's where the 750 gallon comes into play uh, for the most part. Um, the ice issue as you're leaving the site. These are automatic car washes. They're not self, uh, how would you call it there? They're not the, the, the self car wash with the wand and all that. Mm -hmm. These car washes are set up. They will have the blower on every function, no matter what car wash you get, to blow the water off, obviously on site as best you can, minimal tracking. The other thing is, is that uh, Mr. Blake went ahead and proposed from the building out front, that whole front area, all the way out to Maiden Lane, would be paving, but it's going to have a heated paving. He's going to do a thermal heated paving, so which is going to help with his own on-site snow removal as well. Um, when we left here the last meeting, the thing was Maiden, Maiden Lane itself, I, I think was probably the issue that was still under discussion. Is that a fair statement? Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. And just so you know, we're here informal back then, and we're here informal tonight. And I think everybody sort of appreciated us coming in to try to talk about this stuff before we made all these official submittals, mm -hmm. went into final design and so on, because once you start that, you got stormwater management you got to deal with. It's a lot of money to be spent by Mr. Blake, and that's why we wanted to try to 
sort of get some of the details hammered out before we got into the minute uh, engineering, if you will. So, uh, Michelle and Steve, we met out on site last week, and I went ahead and put together a little exhibit, which we handed out to you. Um, the thought was, Maiden, Maiden Lane's basically average 18 feet wide. The 18 feet wide on Maiden Lane is basically the, you know, Carroll County actually has a spec for a public road that handles, you know, obviously much more traffic than this, this alleyway. That's 18 feet wide. So we know functional, we can, you can handle the amount. But during the snow removal we were talking about, it looks though, when you look at Maiden, uh, Maiden Lane, that the snow can be removed or plowed basically from edge of paving to edge of paving. There's one area where there's a, there's a garage that's right up on the roadway. But what we proposed is, is on, if there's more significant storms where you actually have to push the snow somewhere, is to, if I will, this whole front was planned on being for ingress and egress. But during a snowstorm, if it's significant and you need it, we would go ahead and grant easements to the towns and we'd have it striped off the way. <coughs> there's places to pile snow for all of Maiden Lane, some areas, and we thought that that way may work. The other thing you're thinking about is, it's the same area, it's going to be heated, it's going to be melting, and going into the drainage system, which is going back on the site. Um, so we thought that, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I guess I'll put words in your mouth, that we thought that was a, a pretty decent idea um, to handle that. Um, you guys would plow, plow, push it there, and then at that point, Mr. Blake would sit there and handle, basically to handle... 10 to 12 foot lanes where he would just plow so traffic can still go on the site and off the site during if somebody wants to come in there while it's still obviously snow on the ground. Um, what we did was from the original site plan we pushed the building back about another 20 feet or so and what that did was the queuing for the was originally 20 automobiles. The gentleman that was here two months ago, obviously thought 20 was excessive to begin with, but we, really, I went ahead, we, we reduced it by two, so we're down to 18 queuing back to here, but when you look at the amount of track, that cars that you can still stack, they even involve Maiden uh, Lane, is about, I, I was talking about with, a, with an additional 12 vehicles plus or minus, so you're looking at basically 30 vehicles being there at one given time. And that doesn't include if vehicles are over here using the vacuum that's, that, that would be on site. So anyway, there's, there's a lot of area for cars to go before it would ever impact Maiden Lane. So um, that's what we had come up with on that, that aspect of it. Any questions? Mr. Hagman, when you say 30, so 30 without any disruption to Maiden Lane at all. No, it's, probably, it's probably more cars than that, but conservatively, 18 cars. That's why I was taking some notes. Coming back to this point here, and if you take this distance here, run it back through, it'll handle 12 cars at least, and there's another area for another three cars in this location. So you're looking at somewhere between 30 and 33 cars. <laughs> that's that's a lot of cars to be anywhere in one at, at one point in time for a car wash. The car wash person, the rep, two months ago, thought that just a queuing of 20 was more than was, would ever be needed. But we just thought that that was a, it's, it's overkill, but we'd rather prove that it's more than we'd ever need just for the fact that, you know. And again, if that's the case, I mean, we could scoot the building back even further to provide more area to put snow. But you're looking at two areas that are about 35 by 35 in dimension to pile snow, and it's heated, being melted and then put back into the system, which goes on site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, on the meeting minutes, um, the blower that's inside, the, as the garage doors come up, as you're moving the vehicle out, the blower, some, uh, one of the gentlemen uh, talked about noise. I, I, don't, I forget who brought it, but the gentleman says it's, it's um, basically the same and I forget what he actually, he mentioned it. It was a, 
it's, it, the decibel rating on the blower is no more than an alarm clock when you look at it. Um, the, the bottom line is we're, it's as the garage doors are open, this blower is rolling and as, as it's putting the water off your vehicle. Um, and there, but there is noise to it, but it's nothing that would have an impact to, to anybody in the surrounding community. What was the estimated usage per day that you were calculating? I don't recall. As far as number of vehicles that be that you anticipate. sixty per day, average. We had, we rough we looked at if you were at uh, was it six o'clock in the morning to eight p.m. at night. Yeah, about four. I think it equates about four cars, okay. four point some cars per hour. Um, so the uh, when it comes down to, you know, Saturday mornings will probably be, you know, when people go wash their cars, mm -hmm. you know, it, during the day it's more going to be more scattered, you know, that kind of thing. And then I think we were, the discussions you were talking about, your operating hours being, what, 6 to 10 or 6 to 11, what were you? We actually <clears throat> left it open, I think. Yeah, I mean, I know you... you we were, uh, there was some concern about impact on the community by keeping it open too late. I didn't, you know, if you'd given any thought to what you were going to, what you were He thinking. can speak to that. I mean, there's, yeah. there's flexibility there, I believe, yes. okay. I mean, that we talked about. How much exterior lighting are we going to have on this facility? Um, we haven't even... We haven't got to that point okay. that I that I'm aware of the original plan, but the uh, couple things they um, anything we have can be a direct light yeah. down. That's what I was we can control suggest. that. We can certainly do we can certainly do uh, a photometric plan based on the lights that we have. We have programs that will do that um, to have you know basically no no impact at the property line. I mean when they say no impact, that's that's no you might still see a glare because you can see the light from the, right. It's not like you're going to see the light, but it doesn't. The have light any, won't be shining on your property. Exactly. You won't get a. Yep. Thank you. Shine coming. internally. Yeah. Okay. Um, and whether we have some on the building itself to limit the ones we need in the, in the area, you know, the parking area, that'll all, I guess, all also be predicated on the hours of operation we can work with us also. That could be something that would be probably nice to have a light that stays on on the building mm -hmm. that sort of keeps the entranceway mm -hmm. illuminated a little bit. But the back parking lots and stuff can be shut down. But I think you, you definitely want to, I'm sure he's going to have surveillance. Yeah, you're going to want surveillance. Yeah, yeah. understood. <clears throat> um, yep. And then I guess the only other question, and maybe you, Steve, you can also respond to this. At the previous meeting we had talked about traffic flow and possibly limiting traffic going towards Westminster and Maiden because of the bad intersection? Yep. Was there any other discussion? There, was, there okay. was no. There wasn't, but we can certainly stripe the entrance or the exit to actually right turn only. Okay. And what we would do is we would have the striping that would even go in the area where it's hatched. When it's no snow, people will use that whole paved area. Mm -hmm. But we would also, where he's going to actually plow for future snow, we'd have we'd have arrows saying it's right turn lonely. We can also, we, you know, if there's a sign, we can certainly post signs to force as much traffic as we can down the other way. That's not an issue on our on our side. Well, Steve, what was your thought about the uh, snow easement? I like it. Yeah. Uh, when they came to us <clears throat> with that idea, I was like, okay, it gets very tight back there. We always I'm talking about a heavy, heavy snow, let's say 12 inches and right, above. Right, right. And any, any <coughs> access we have to dump snow, especially on a heated lot like yeah, that. Yeah, because we can lose it. Yes, that's correct. Right. That means a lot to us, especially in that area. And then they'll take the water. That's correct. That's correct, so. yes. Okay. That was a very good, innovative idea. <coughs> I'll be happy to give you credit for it. <laughs> No. Um, what air is geothermal? That's I'm just sorry. a curiosity question. It's uh, just a radiant heat. It's okay. not geothermal. It'll okay. be a boiler with a glycol tubing ran throughout the parking lot. 
He's the plumber, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> um, I might do this once in a while. Yeah, right, right. Excellent. You know, our... our any, uh, any solar planned or windmills or anything? No solar planned, but <laughs> it's not out of the realm. Right. Well, does it have a windmill to dry the cars? I'm kidding. You know, <laughs> hey. That's a, that's a lot of heat, but... Uh... <clears throat> Any other uh, questions or comments? Yeah, more uh, to Steve. Um, well, Maidens Lane's infrastructure, how far out in the future has it been pushed? Um, Actually, that section of the infrastructure on Maiden Lane isn't part of our, uh, let's say, two-year phase-in. Uh, the, the Maiden Lane infrastructure that we were talking about that we had bid out would be uh, farther south on the south side of High Street. More towards Manchester Motors. Correct. On that end. Yes. Okay. That side of Maiden Lane and also part of New Street. But is it is the top end also <coughs> still part of the old terracotta piping? Well, it's part of the old cast iron piping. The old cast yes. iron. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, we're going to be doing an outage tomorrow, where we'll be able to insert a new valve, and at that time we'll be able to see how bad that pipe actually is, and that's at the intersection of Maiden Lane and New Street. So once we pull that old valve out, we'll be able to look up into the water main and see how bad it actually is. Okay. Measure thickness and so on. <coughs> if the um, if if and when main lanes infrastructure did go in, is it going to raise main lane? It will not. No, the actual top height of main lane would be that that, that would be if he's elevation. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if he had to factor he should factor that in or not. But Excuse me, I didn't. I didn't know if he should factor that in or not. But um, no, he doesn't. No. Yeah. Everything the elevation will stay the same. Yeah. Hours of operation. You were looking for an opening and closing every day, not ever a point where it'd be twenty four hours. Or is that still something that's just to be? I mean, personally, I'd like twenty four hours. But if you guys tell me we need to limit the usage, then we'll do what we need to do. And, you know, that's something that if you want to, you guys can decide on that during the site plan process as we're going through. Because this, you know, this is just normal. <coughs> right, so, right. So right. Get your thoughts. Said, yep. Our goal was, you know, if, if there's a real issue that's going to be a showstopper, we'd like to probably hear it now. And I think we've addressed the stuff that are any real concerns uh, for the most part. We still got stormwater management design. We got to do all the stuff to bring right. it up to today's standards. Um, but we really appreciate, you know, the opportunity to do this because... You know, some some municipalities want you to make official submittals, and official submittals cost a lot of money. A lot of money, and uh, when you can just talk <coughs> about it and brainstorm it, this is the way I think it right. should be. But yeah. so we appreciate it. Anything else? Just Steve, I guess just going back to the water issue again. Uh, Seven hundred fifty gallons a day is what they seem to be uh, after the initial fill. Yes, that's a workable number for us. Okay. Yes, that's and and I think. I think, as Mr. Hackett mentioned, you know, years ago when we were looking at this project, you know, things have changed as far as recycling the right. water to, to the better. And now we can we can handle that per day. That's okay. not a problem. And using it, comparing it to three single-family homes in that area. Right. That could be placed there. Correct. Good. Yes, sir. Very similar. That's correct. Yes. yes. That's correct. I have no other comments. I no. think they're trying to work with us. So. No, I appreciate uh, thank it. Very you. good. I like, I, like, I like the right turn. Yeah. They will uh, definitely incorporate that in the final right. design. And the, the snow storage is actually. Yeah, the snow storage and the yeah. heated. Because that was, a, that was an issue. <clears throat> Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Um, <clears throat> that takes care of the car wash. Again, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, public comment. You have anything to anyone who needs to speak? Yes, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Do I need to go up there? Yes, ma'am, please. Thank introduce you yourself. Know <coughs> who you are. Michelle Martin, 3053 Main Street. I'm curious, when was the last time you all looked at the definitions in um, 250.125? 
of the code, does that stuff go back to 79 or has there been something more current? In particular, I'm concerned about the agricultural definition because it seems overly broad and not nearly up to date with what people are doing with their own personal gardens and things like that in their yards. So does anyone have that information? So can you explain to us um, what you mean by their gardens? Basically, the definition for agri agricultural states, the raising of farm products, growing of crops such as grains, vegetables, fruits, or grass for pasture or sod would all be considered agricultural. Okay. I don't think that having a personal garden growing fruits and vegetables would qualify under that definition. So as this states, the raising of farm products for use or sale. So you, you don't think 250-125 under the agriculture, agriculture uses, uh, a garden in your backyard is permitted under that? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Oh, okay. When you don't was the know. last time this very broad definition was looked at to ascertain those things? If this had been done in 1979, when a lot of the annotated code was, I guess, updated, I don't know. I could see where people might not have questioned it because back then a lot of people maybe didn't have gardens and things like that. That's something that came about as people tried to get closer back to the earth and their own food. But my no, I think you'd actually find in the town there was a lot more personal gardens for tomatoes right. and small vegetables to use in the kitchen more so than there is now. Exactly. That's why I, <laughs> I have an ordinance violation having to do with my, my usage of being agricultural, and I'm finding that there's nothing really definitive in this definition. Because it's what is the broad. specific violation that you're dealing with? I have four chickens in my backyard. Okay. And we're at, and you're at 3053 Main. Yes. What's your zoning on that property? BL Commercial. BL Commercial. But nothing from New Street to Beaver where Abert's is is really large commercial. I mean, there's the little shop that used to be Hess Music that's now the vape shop. Mm -hmm. And there's Janine's painting. And there's a big building that's mostly apartment but there's a guy in the back that has an auto place that goes out into the alleyway, which is a long lane. So the primary violation is the distance? That's the primary? Yes, the but now I'm questioning the agricultural definition. Yes. How, how far are you, are you from other neighbors? They're right next door, but I checked with them before I got the chickens. I am building a house for my chickens because I was told as long as they were inside, it was okay. But then my question becomes, is that going to be enough if you all think everything is agricultural? <clears throat> what if I had a dog run? Is that going to be a pen? We specifically address fowl, chickens. Mm -hmm. one, I mean, one, they're yeah, addressed specifically. Well, there's a one, lot one. more fowl than chickens. Chickens are a fowl, but there's a lot of wild birds, too, and they're fowl. Um, we, wait, wait a minute. I'm having addressed. trouble with that one. Fowl? You can uh, have parrots? You can have parakeets? Is that what, I mean, is that yeah, part but of I the wouldn't, definition? I wouldn't, that's, not, that's not a fowl. No. Well, that's these not. are words, th this is verbiage that I'm finding in the terms yeah. that are in the Manchester Code that I'm trying to get clarification on. To me, this agricultural veri verification definition, the way that it's worded, is overly broad and overly general. So that was my initial question. When was the last time somebody actually looked at this definition to see if it was still pertinent? Michelle, do you have the answer to that? The definitions have not been, and I don't know when they were examined. Like, we've done, we've done the zoning <coughs> code section before, which I've talked about with the 250. Right. Definitions, I've ne I have never been involved in redoing. We've added to them as we've added some parts of the code that needed definition. Agriculture, I have not. Quite frankly, this is probably the first time in 16 years on this board that anything agricultural has been mentioned in a meeting, so I guess it's just never come up. Right. Mm -mm. And, so, and I think the part you're questioning of the definition is use. Exactly. Yeah. 
Exactly. So personal personal consumption versus sale. So exactly. does, does I, use mean does use mean personal consumption or does use mean in the use of a business? And isn't your agriculturally overbroad if you're stating all gardening? I mean, all fruits and vegetables? That seems a little bit mm -hmm. broad to me. So if use, if, if use meant personal consumption, then anyone who has a garden would be out of compliance. Exactly. Is where you're heading. I, exactly. I don't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't see it that way. Okay. No, Under I, uses. I, I think your interpretation of it, I would interpret it. I would interpret it as the raising of product. I don't want you to put a cornfield in your backyard. It's funny. I can see a cornfield from my backyard, yet I'm the one that got the citation. <laughs> well, that cornfield is on an agricultural piece of land. But I'm is talking it? about I live in a neighborhood, and I wouldn't want my neighbors to put a cornfield from their property line to my property line. And I would have thought people didn't want chickens, but it's funny. All the people that lived in the subdivision, last the last meeting I was at, thought the chickens were a great idea. But That's because they don't have them living next to them. That's true. That's why. So I, I think yeah, we have to kind of look at look at this specifically to your issue. So you have four chickens on your lot that Richard are Garden. that are free range. I'm assuming by the way you're talking. Yes. And there is no um, there is no restriction. My idea of free ranging is literally if they go down to the old pharmacy to get a drink. That's what they're doing. They're, no, they have to be contained. They are, con are they, uh, well, I'm going to tell you, coming up Black Rock Road, there's a free-range chicken, and today one didn't make it back across the road. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so that's a free-range, <laughs> that was but a free-range But in free her case, free-range would yes. be the limits of her property. Property, yes. okay, yes. so they're kept within your property. But not penned up and continuously. They are the, penned at night. Right, but not. Well, I call it an aviary because it has bird netting on the top of right. it because I don't want the hawks getting them. Mm -hmm. They're more like pets to me. It's kind of mm -hmm. like friends with benefits. They're pets with benefits. I get yeah. nice organic eggs because I give them all organic feed. They have plenty of room without being stinky or messy. I clean all the time. So did you say that at some point they're not within that cage area? So at some point they are running free? In my yard. In your yard. But they're running free. They're not, they could go to next door if they wanted to. They'd have to fly over the fence, but if you give them enough they're room, pen, they're, the yard is the yes. pen. I'm okay. assuming. Got by, it. by the way, no, you're talking. I have a yard that's fenced with with four foot fence, mm -hmm. and when they started getting out of that, I bought six foot fence to contain them in. Then they can actually fly over that, which who knew? So I had to get the bird netting for the top. Plus, I needed to do that to keep them protected from the hawks anyway. Mm -hmm. So she adjoins residential property. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here, let me go back to the. the the complaints were received. I sent the code letter because at that time the chickens were run down to the bar to get a drink. <laughs> they were literally free ranging. <laughs> then um, when Michelle contacted me, she said she had put up a fence. Now, we don't allow chain link fences. It, I didn't approve the fence yet, no zoning certificate for the fence, and we don't allow chicken wire fences. It's not a permanent fence. My fencing can all be moved. But that doesn't matter. I can't let somebody put up construction fencing as their fence around their yard either. It has to be something that's approved type fencing. So that's a whole different issue. But the main thing with the chickens was not that she had the chickens. It's the distance requirements of the pen. And that was Because the, she abuts residential right. zone. And I have found with everyone who has chickens, they put the pen at the end of their yard away from them, but they really want the chickens. Nobody will put them up by their house. It's always at the furthest part, which is closer to the other people, which normally are my complaint-driven chicken complaints. There, I haven't seen anybody in our town, probably our, some of our, our 40s that are a little bigger than 40 could, could meet those distance requirements. Yeah. But we've had a lot of people that we have had, had to remove them. But you all said as long as they were inside, they were okay. Meeting inside as in... I never said inside. I just said we didn't allow chickens because we even address it again in our um, property maintenance ordinance that we're, if it's a nu nuisance or a menace to health or whatever, we don't. So if I received a call saying that your chickens were keeping people up at night, to me that would be a nuisance. And I would write that you needed to get rid of that. Then the guy who thinks he's Jimi Hendrix that opens his windows that lives. is also a nuisance. And that's a police issue on that side. But <laughs> 
<laughs> we have a lot of police issues in my neighborhood. The rental house next door used to be full of drug addicts, but I never called the police. My question is, to me, that agricultural definition appears overly broad. So my initial question was, when was the last time it was looked at? Well, that is something that I just stated tonight that we were going to do a workshop, and that's something that we'll throw into looking at. It's part of our Yeah, training. I can't answer that question. Yeah. It hasn't been looked at as long as I've been here. When we did the two, I don't know. The last time the zoning ordinance was done was when... Sue and Michelle Oostrander did it, and that was before I was in this. So I don't know if, if it's it's a, it's definitely. been probably been a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're growing crops on buildings in urban areas anymore. So these things that used to be set in stone are starting to change. With understood people trying to get away from trying mass to be a little more self-sufficient. Well, not only that, you want to be healthier. Yeah. I don't want to eat GMO products. I don't want to eat the stuff that, you know, Monsanto tells me is good for me, but I don't think so. Yeah. I do think you're right. If a group of people got together and started redefining crops, they would define the average home garden as not being as agricultural prohibitions. But they might not say that chickens aren't foul. Chickens will be Probably chickens always aren't foul. Yeah. I'm just saying chickens aren't chickens are poultry, which is a bird, but there's other birds too. In the animal section of the ordinance, it talks about fowl, and I assume that to be parakeets. You know, people, birds, people keep inside parrots, parakeets, things like that. Toucans, if they want to have a toucan, but I was just taken back a little but, bit that everything that you wanted to use for personal use seemed to be consider agriculture, and I just wasn't sure where that came from. Yeah. So you're going to look at it? Yes. To okay. the commission members, uh, would, would you feel more comfortable if, if uh, that's, we can either wait for our work session, or would you like our town attorney to take a look at that, uh, that specific item, agriculture or agriculture purposes, and get his opinion of what that means? Well, I think in the interim, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that. But then we, all, you know, I would like to also all of us sit down and look at this because. I mean, you have personal use that doesn't really. Right. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying we'll agree with your position, but I, I think it needs to be, I agree it needs to be looked at okay. in 21st century prism versus okay. 20th century prism. That's all we can offer you at this point. Perfect. But we'll be happy to take a look at it for Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if it's the legal interpretation of that, and right. that, that can give us a basis to start. Right. right. And then exactly. do you have access to, Steve and Michelle, do you have access just as a um, reference to other towns, planning and zoning, that address the uh, suburban or urban yes. gardening slash Pets for, for this type of thing. I'd like to see what somebody else has, has done with it. Also, yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for the good of the board? No. Steve, Michelle, anything else? No. Okay. Thank you all this evening for a productive meeting. Got a lot done. Uh, Motion to adjourn. I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.